In this video, what I want to do is work through three difficult problems for factoring quadratic trinomials when a is not equal to one. Now, I don't mean difficult by dealing with like really big numbers. I'm dealing with like just difficult because we're going to have multiple different options. And I want to be able to work through these problems by doing it in our head rather than kind of showing you, you know, the factoring, you know, factoring different factoring techniques where we can do it slowly. I want to be able to do these kind of quickly and to be able to process them all in my head. Now, don't worry, I will explain everything that I am doing as I am going through it and thinking it on my head. But I want to kind of show you with the process when you have a problem that we kind of consider more difficult for factoring when a is not equal to one and kind of show you how you can approach it. And so therefore, hopefully when you have a test or a quiz comes up or you have a problem that you, that is a part of another problem and you need to get it done, it doesn't feel overwhelming to you. So let's go and take a look at our first example. In this case, we have four N squared plus a 16 N plus 15. Now, the reason why I consider these a, a difficult problem to be able to factor is because you have a composite number for your first term and you have a composite or composite coefficient and you have a composite as a constant. So what that means is you just have a ton of options for um, possibilities of your factors. Now, the cool thing is, remember when you have a quadratic trinomial, this can be rewritten as a product of two binomials, right? Now, what we need to do though, is we need to consider like both cases. The first case is for the, uh, the, the first case is going to be for our factors of 4n and n, right? Because a 4n times an n is going to multiply to give me a 4n squared. We can also work with our factor case of 2n times a 2n. Now, I always like to look at my, I always like to look at the first case of when I'm doing this in my head of the 4n and n, because those are going to be the farthest apart. Now, the nice thing to recognize here is that whenever your last term is positive and your middle term is positive, that means both factors are going to be positive. What that also means is you're going to add the products of your inner and your outer to get to a 16n. Now, the reason why this is important is because I'm going to start doing some math in my head. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend like, what if I did a 4n times a 15? Well, that's going to give me a 60. There's no way I'm going to get to, that's already above 16, right? So I said, all right, that's not going to work. Well, then what if I did a four, or I'm sorry, a you know one here and a 15 here? And you say, well, that's, again, that's going to be a 4n, right? That's a 15n plus 4n is going to be a 19n. So no matter what I do, I'm always going to get above a 16 there. Now, what if you switch this up here? And I should probably write out these factors, right? So over a 15, we have a 15 times a 1, or we have a 5 times a 3. Now, again, the only one else that would work that would be kind of close here is what if I did a 4 times a 3? Because I don't want to do 4 times 5. 4 times 5 is already 20. So what if I did a four times three? And again, a lot of times you can think about this in your head without even writing it down. And then over here, it'd be a five, right? Five N because five times three is 15. Um, so now let's go and see what that would give us. Five times N would be a five N. Four N times three is going to be a 12 N. So 12 N plus five N is a 17 N, which is extremely close, but no cigar, right? So let's go back over here. And again, I don't want to do 15. That's not going to work. 15 and one are not good factors. Um, that are not going to work here because two times 15 is already 30. So I kind of already know that my answer here is going to be a plus five and a plus three, right? I already know it has to be both positive, right? And again, my only other option here is going to be a five and a three. So with kind of using, I don't like to say like common sense, but kind of knowing what you're looking for and how to approach these problems, you can kind of make the problem a little bit easier than it really does. Cause even though I consider that problem difficult, we kind of factored it kind of in, in like a simplistic manner. So let's go and take a look at another example. What if I had like a 6y squared minus a 5y minus 4, okay? Now again, same kind of idea. We have a couple different options here to factor this. We could do this in terms of a 6y times y, or we could do this as a 3y times a 2y, right? Because both those are going to multiply to give me a 6y squared. And then my last number, 4, here, I could do this as a 4 times 1 and, or a 2 times 2. Now, again, we kind of get a little bit more difficulty here because my last number here is negative. So when your last number is negative, one of your factors is positive and one of your factors is going to be negative, right? Because 4 times 1 or 2 times 2, one of those has to be negative to give us a negative 4. So what do we do here? Well, again, now instead of looking at like the sum of your two factors, right? And you can see how these two added to give me, that's a 10n, that's a two times two N that's a six N. So that adds up to 16 N. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find the difference of our two products. 
All right. So that's why a lot of times these can be um, even more difficult because rather than adding up the two products, we're going to find the difference of them. All right. So, and again, so a lot of times there's not any like dead giveaways here, right? Um, now I can say if I put a four here and a one here, like the difference of six times 24, which is, or six times four, which is 24 and one, which would be a 23. So that's not going to work. Right. Um, and then if I switched it around, which I can kind of do in my head, that'd be a six Y times one, six Y and a four Y, right? A four times Y, which is four Y that's going to have a difference of two. Right. So see what I have here. That's a four Y and that's a one. So six Y times six Y times one is a six Y. And then four times Y is a four Y. The difference between that is a two Y. I'm looking for a five, right? Forget about the negative for a second. Just figure out the difference. Now, the nice thing here is we have a two and a two. So let's see if that would be a 12 and a two, that's going to have a difference of 10, right? A 12 and a two. Yeah, that's not going to work. So this is not going to be our good factors. So then let's go over here. Um, now in this case, again, if I did four, like multiplying by four, um, is going to kind of get me here. Well, four actually wouldn't be too bad. Actually, if I did a six and a two, so two times two would give me a four and a six times two would give me a six. That's because six and four are only a difference too. So I'm going to think about a four. Now I don't want to multiply a four over here and a two over here, not four and two, that'd be a one, right? Because the reason why I want to do that is that's going to give me a 12 Y and this would only give me a two Y again, that has a difference of, um, uh, 10 Y. So, but what about if I switch these up? What about if I put a four here and then I just put a one here now, again, four times two Y is an eight Y three Y times Y is going to be a three Y eight Y and three. I have a difference of five Y awesome. Now, since my middle term is negative, the larger of these two products, I want to be negative. So which one is larger? Four times two Y, which is eight Y or three Y times Y, which is a Y. Well, this one's going to be negative and that one's going to be positive because eight Y is larger than a three Y. And there you go. That is your factor form. Cause again, you can see that the difference or the sum of one positive and one negative here is going to be, um, negative four Y or negative eight Y and three Y, which is a negative five Y. All right, let's go and take a look at one more example. And again, like this one <clears throat> can get students like very caught off guard. You can be like, look in this and be like, oh my God, there's no way I can factor this. There's way too many options, right? We have a 10, we have 27, but again, like just break it up guys. If you say, all right, we could do a 10 X times an X, right? Or you could do a five X times a two X, right? There's your options. Now 27 does have a lot of factors. I get it, right? So you can do 27, but not really that many guys, 27 times one, or you could do a nine times three. Right. So even though you might be dealing with a little bit bigger numbers, it's not overly crazy. Now, again, look at this. Like I always like to start over here. Do I really want to multiply a 10 times anything? Oh, now again, real quick, notice that my last term is negative. So again, we're looking for the difference of my two um, inner and outer products. Okay. So we're looking for the difference. Um, and now since my middle term is positive, the larger of those two is going to be a positive. But again, I don't want to multiply 10 times 27. That would be huge. <laughs> I only want a difference of three. So I want these to be kind of close together. 10 times nine, no. 10 times three, no, right? Um, now 10 times three would be, you give us 30. And then nine times X though is a nine X. So 30 and nine have a difference of 21. So yeah, we're not even close. So this is just not working out. Um, now what about over here? Again, I don't want to multiply five times a 27, nor do I want to multiply five times one and have a two times 27. That difference of those two factors is never going to get close to three. Um, however, let's go ahead and see, but what about if I did, I don't want to multiply a five times nine, that's a 45. I'm never going to get to close to 45 by multiplying three by two, right? But what if I switch that around? What about if I multiply a five times three, that's 15 and a nine times two, right? So that's going to be 18. What's the difference between 18 and 15? Three. Now though, my middle term is positive. So if you remember in the last example, I tried to find the difference. The larger of the two products had to be, po I had to be negative, right? Because my middle term was negative. In this example, I want the larger of my two products to be positive because my middle term is positive. Because again, we're looking basically for the difference of them. One's going to be positive. One's going to be negative. So nine times two is going to be an 18. Five times, five times three is 15. So nine times two is, is, um, positive or 18. So therefore that's larger. So therefore that's going to be positive. And then we'll make that one negative. And again, let's just check our work real quick. Five X times two X is going to be a 10 X squared. Nine times negative three is negative 27. And then nine times two X is an 18 X and a five X times negative three is going to be a negative 10 X. So eight, oh, I'm sorry, negative 15 X. 
So negative 15 plus 18 is going to be a positive 15, uh, a positive 3x. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully now you have a better idea of how to factor some more difficult quadratics. I hope this video was helpful for you. And if it was, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.